Thanks, Shira. And um, I really am happy to be here and um, to present to you all um, some thoughts about how to get started with your business's digital footprint. So um, here is uh, me, Shira and I were having a discussion. This is my pre-COVID hair. Um, <laughs> but uh, I am the owner of Kurtz Digital Strategy. Um, a um, agency that focuses on relationship marketing for small businesses. My resume probably looks a lot like the resume, your resume. Um, I worked for more than 30 years in a corporate, um, corporate jobs and um, decided I wanted to make a change as I had done a couple of times in my career and I was 50 something. And I found that the opportunities when you're 50 something are a lot different than when you're 20 something or 30 something. Um, so it really caused me to reevaluate what, um, my next, um, what my next step was that I wanted to do. And um, I decided to take the leap and to start my own business um, and leverage the experience that I had gained over the course of my career. Um, so right today, I work with clients who are either independent professionals or small businesses. So we're just gonna dive right in here to some of the basics of establishing the digital footprint for your um, professional, whether you consider yourself a freelancer or a small business or a large business. Um, here are some fundamentals. The first thing you wanna do, just like you need to register the name of your business, um, with uh, legal entities, you want to claim the domain um, for the name of your business, uh, whatever you want that identity to be. There are lots of what are called domain uh, registrars out there. I listed three here on the slide that are the most commonly used, um, all have a very good reputation. You're generally going to pay the same uh, to register a domain no matter who you use. So um, it's, not a, don't, it's not a decision to spend a whole lot of time on. Um, the next thing you're going to want is an email address on your domain. Um, you can, most of these domain registrars will allow you, will host email for you. Um, several, um, se there are several other choices to host email. Um, Google G Suite is also an excellent op option. Um, so excellent that that's what I used for uh, my Kurtz Digital Strategy domain. It runs you $5 an email address, um, not very expensive. And the thing that I really like about um, using Google is it's independent. You know, your website may, you may decide to change where your website is hosted, or you may decide to change your domain registrar. Um, but Google is accessible anywhere, and um, it's uh, very, very easy to use. Um, if you are not ready to take the plunge and um, set up a domain yet, um, another option is to just register for a free Gmail account with your business name. Um, so instead of Jill at KurtzDigitalStrategy.com, it would be KurtzDigitalStrategy at gmail.com. Um, and that email you can have for free. So that's another great way to get started with having a professional email address. And then the next thing you wanna do right after you've done this is to create an email signature. There are some tools out there that'll allow you to kind of, you know, fancify your, your email signature, but just make sure you have the basics. You want, if you have a logo for your business, you want to include that. You want your name, you want your phone number, you want your business name. And the thing that's on here that so many people forget is you want your email address. Now you might say, why do I need my email address? Because people are getting my email. Well, what if somebody helpfully forwards your email to somebody who they think might benefit from knowing you? Your email in that original email may be lost. That header information isn't carried from message to message. So you don't want that to happen. So you wanna make sure your signature includes your email address. So I wanna start off with a quick poll about your current digital footprint. Um, so we're gonna launch a poll and there's gonna be five choices. You should be able to pick more than one. And let's, I just want I'm interested to know where you are online right now. Um, so Shira, launch the poll. Um, so go ahead and make your choices.
Okay. So, um, so we've got results. Um, LinkedIn apparently is, is the winner, which is not a surprise, consider the professional nature of, um, of the folks who are on the call today. Um, but I see about half of you have a website, which is terrific. 62% um, are on LinkedIn. Um, and I am there with you, the 29% of you, um, six of you who are, really don't feel like you're anywhere yet. Um, you're in the right place because uh, that's what, what it's all about today is uh, getting, you, uh, getting you off to a great start. Um, so um, I am still seeing the poll results. Let me see if I need to close that out. Okay. Um, Shira, did you close out the poll? Yep. Okay, it's still um, covering my screen, unfortunately. And if I try to do anything, okay, got it. Oh, I got rid of it. Thank you. Okay, Ooh, it's back. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so first things that you want to think about um, is capitalizing on opportunities that are really kind of just out there waiting for you to just take advantage of them. Nothing you have to do um, other than to establish your presence and make it, um, make it what you want it to be. So 62% of you are already on LinkedIn, which is awesome. Um, but it might be time to take a look at that LinkedIn profile. You may have created it as I had done when you were employed full time, um, it doing something that's not quite what you're trying to do now. Um, you know, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got about LinkedIn is make your LinkedIn profile aspirational. It should reflect not necessarily the timeline of what you have done. It should reflect what you want to be doing. So take a look at your LinkedIn profile with that lens. Once you have your profile in, um, in good shape, you want to create a free LinkedIn business page for the business that you're trying to have. And if you ever go to a profile and you notice somebody's got experience and it has um, just a, a little icon of a building and not the, the logo of that business, it's because they don't have a business page for that business. So um, a great professional look on LinkedIn is to establish your business page. Um, to do that, um, you have to have your own profile. It's a question I get a lot. Um, you can't have a business page without a profile of you as an individual. But when you're logged in as an individual, one of your menu options is to create a company page. And there's a WYSIWYG. It just walks you right through um, the steps that you need to take to establish that page. You can do that in probably less than five minutes. Um, so um, create that page. Make sure, um, and there is a BoomerWorks training document that, um, that ta helps you to think about the messaging you might want to put in there. But just make sure in your LinkedIn uh, company page that you're taking advantage of all the fields that are relevant to you. There are fields for licenses and uh, certifications that may or may not apply to your type of business. There are other fields that will allow you to um, uh, basically do like a portfolio where you can present projects that you've done. That's more relevant in some areas than others. So just take a look at all of the available um, fields and make sure you populate all the ones that are really relevant to you. And then a really, um, a, one of the things that kind of separates uh, folks that are intentional from just kind of default stuff is um, you do have the option to customize your URL. Usually LinkedIn will give you a URL that's like the name of your page followed by a lot of numbers and you can just crop, crop all those numbers right off and just wind up with a nice clean URL you know, like linkedin.com forward slash Kirk's Digital Strategy. So um, take, take a moment to do that, because that, that really just amps up the professionalism a little Jill, bit. would it be okay if I jumped in real super, super fast? Um, sure. Just to let people know, on your LinkedIn page, if you're looking for where that is, you're going to go to the upper right-hand corner. There's a button that says Work. You drop down on the, the Work button at the very, very bottom. It actually has a, a, a tag that says Create a Company Page. Yeah, and LinkedIn has terrific, um, you know, help. Uh, help, help walk you through step by step. Um, one of the things um, that uh, is true across all social media is kind of depending on what you have turned on and what you have turned off, what you see in a particular place on a particular screen um, can be a little bit jumbled. So that is where it is typically. Thank you, Shira. Um, if you're not finding it, just jump into the LinkedIn help and it'll, it'll guide you exactly where to find that. Um, 
The next thing that you should do is create, likewise, a Facebook page. Just like LinkedIn, you have to have a, a, a profile as an individual. How much that bends toward your personal life versus your professional life is completely up to you. But you do need that profile in order to create a LinkedIn, uh, I mean, excuse me, a Facebook company page. Um, so it's a very similar, um, similar to the drop down in LinkedIn. Um, that little downward uh, triangle uh, will allow you to add a company page. Um, it will walk you through the different fields that you have to populate. Just like LinkedIn, you want to make sure that you complete all the fields that are relevant to you. Um, you can add awards in there. You can add services. Um, you just need to kind of explore all the ones that you think are highly relevant to the business that you are um, presenting. And like LinkedIn, you can customize your Facebook URL, just kind of trim off all those miscellaneous um, characters that it might append on the end. And I'm trying to, oh, there we go. Okay, so um, I said in the beginning, you know, you may be thinking of yourself in your business as a freelancer, an individual who is, you know, has a skill set that you're, you're looking to apply to one or more clients. Um, you may also be thinking of yourself as a small business. Um, these are sites that really kind of cater to that kind of freelance approach, you know, marketing your products, your, your particular skill set to folks that want to hire for that skill set. So there's a bunch of, um, bunch of logos here from sites that um, cater to that. Um, most of these sites, you can just go on and create a profile for free. Um, their business model is they either get money from folks who are looking to hire or folks that want to bid on jobs or both. Um, so, but generally you can set up your profile for free um, without, you know, making any long-term obligation. Uh, once again, you want to use your brand messaging, which we are going to talk about more as we proceed with, uh, with this uh, presentation. Um, and again, there's a terrific BoomerWorks um, resource uh, with a complete listing of freelance sites. Um, you may also really just focus on wanting to sell um, an e-commerce type of approach to your business. Maybe your business is strictly intended to sell products um, online. Like the freelance sites, there's many sites that are just totally geared for that. Um, you can set up a profile for your business um, and then explore you know, what you can do there for free versus what you can do there on a paid basis. They're all, they all have a little bit of a different flavor. It's worthwhile to just do a little research. You may decide you want to be on more than one of these platforms. You may decide one of them is um, a better fit for what you are um, you're selling. So no matter what type of business you, you have, whether it's freelance, it's a small business, it's an e-commerce site, you do want to do one uh, couple of very uh, common things. One is to um, claim your Google business listing. Um, Google um, has a whole host of tools to help small businesses like you and me to compete with the big guys online. Um, if you can remember back 10, 15 years ago, if you did a search for a plumber, no matter where you were sitting, Roto-Rooter would come up. Why? Because they had the biggest marketing budget of anybody. Um, so they could afford to uh, buy all those keywords and even if you were sitting in a town that Roto-Rooter didn't service, you would still get their result. Um, Google has realized that that's not a great search experience for the user. And um, you know, one thing to understand about search engines, uh, we're not gonna talk about SEO today, but a lot of people get very scared and frightened by SEO. Um, but keep in mind, what search engines wanna do is to provide users with the results that they're looking for, bottom line. And so the extent to which you can help Google and other search engines find you and understand exactly what it is you do is a win for the search engine and it's a win for you. Well, one of the ways that Google really identifies local businesses is through their Google business listing. You may already have one and you may not know it. Um, one of the ways to find out is just do a search on your name or your company name. And if you have a Google business listing, it'll probably show up on the right hand margin of the search results page. Um, sometimes those listings don't exist yet and you can start a new Google business listing. 
Um, but it's very much like the LinkedIn page and the Facebook page that we've talked about. You want to go through that listing, make sure you populate all the fields that are appropriate to you. You have an opportunity to put in your logo, you can put in your headshot, you can put in other pictures. Um, but one of the most important things you do in that Google business listing is define your business area. Um, and so even if you, you know, I think all of us would love, never want to turn down any business, but, you know, I'm located in Northern Virginia, and while I would be happy to serve a client in California, fact of the matter is that most of my consulting work is in the Northern Virginia area. So don't be afraid to, um, to focus in on a, a local service area because that's how you're going to beat out the rotor rooters of the world. If you try to be a national business, you are competing nationally. But if you tend to find, carve out um, a service area that's really applicable to you, it really will help your online visibility tremendously for no cost to you, which I personally love the cost of free. Um, you also likewise want to look for directories that are related to your particular profession or industry. Um, my, um, my background, I did many uh, years of work in public relations. I've, I've been a longtime member of the PRSA, Public Relations Society of America. Well, they have a directory of their members. And, you know, I just always make sure that my information is correct. And when I was transitioning, from working for a company to being a free, you know, being having my own business, um, I really had to you know, be very attentive to that because the I didn't want the wrong information out there. There are others. There are some professional directories like you can search like who's the best realtor. Um, uh, you know, there are some directories that aren't related to a particular membership organization. So you just want to know what those directories are that are related to your business and any free profile that you can. Um, establish, claim, and make accurate, you want to take that opportunity um, because all of that adds to your online visibility. One thing that um, a lot of people don't know is um, Yelp. Um, and why do I say Yelp? Um, well, Apple owns Yelp. And um, another concurrent trend um, what with all of online presence is Many, many people are doing voice searches this, these days on their mobile phones. It's like one of the greatest um, trends in searching right now. And so when somebody has an iPhone and they ask Siri, where is a plumber near me? Siri goes to Yelp. So um, Yelp basic business listings are free. It is a directory that um, the Siri search um, bot uses to find local businesses. So it's really well worth your while, no matter what type of business you're in, um, to make sure that you have a local business listing in Yelp. Um, and then another thing to consider, if you are like a service business, I keep using plumbing as an example, but if you're like a homeowner-based business, Nextdoor is a really up and coming. Um, there's Nextdoor sites all over the country. They're all very neighborhood specific. You can even be on a Nextdoor site that's just for a block of uh, houses. Um, but this is where a lot of conversations are happening, where people are um, finding plumbers and landscapers and electricians. So if you're in that kind of homeowner service type thing, um, next door again is a free listing you can have and very much worth considering. So as you're pro uh, populating these profiles, I've kind of made some casual references to what you should be thinking about. Um, and this this part of the conversation is going to it folds very nicely into the last Boomerworks presentation about your elevator speech, because what we're going to talk about is really a, a variant of the elevator speech, and this is you know how you present yourself online. So there are three really key components to, um, to having an effective online message. The first one is your name, address, and phone. It's always, um, there's actually a shorthand in marketing world, we call it the NAP, N-A-P. Um, this may sound really straightforward, but I bet if you have more than one or two pieces of your current digital footprint online, I bet if you looked at them, you're going to find some variant in your name, address, and phone. It's just so easy to do. So you want to be, though, painfully consistent of your name, address, and phone online. 
And the reason for that is the search engine finds different references and that's how it aligns up and to find out that the Jill on LinkedIn is the same as the Jill on Yelp, which is the same as the Jill that is on the PRSA directory. It's name, address, and phone is how it basically determines that things that are in different places are actually referencing the same business. So that's super important. The other important thing is your brand. If you have a logo, use the same logo everywhere. Don't use variants of your logo. You might on your website maybe have more than one variant, but as you decide which one is going to represent your profile online and use it consistently everywhere. That brand might be your headshot and, and pick a particular headshot. Don't change it up everywhere. Um, no points for creativity. Search engines are just looking for consistency. And then the third piece is your marketing message. You know, and I know that there's uh, lots of BoomerWorks resources to help you ask yourself the questions that will lead to your marketing message. But essentially, because it's not the focus of this presentation, you want to make sure you're focusing on your value proposition. What is it that your business offers? And what differentiates you from other people who might put themselves in the same category of professionals? Um, so again, there's a worksheet that help you that can help you work through that. And the last session from BoomerWorks talked about your elevator speech, which is really a, the 30 second um, version of your brand message. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do our first breakout. And um, I think there's going to be about four people to a breakout if all works out well. And I would like you all to just take turns of introducing yourself using your elevator pitch at, or your brand message, however you want to think about it. Um, but make sure, again, that you focus on these important elements, the nap, your name. You maybe don't need to give your, your you can just talk about your location or where you serve. We don't really necessarily need your address or your phone number, but what is that business identity? What's your name? What's your business name? And what's the service area? Describe your brand. And what is your value proposition and differentiators? So a great elevator speech is about 30 or 45 seconds. So we're gonna allocate that for all each one of you um, and hope that every, we've got time that everybody gets a chance to do that um, in the breakout. So I'm gonna stop talking now and let, um, I think Michael is gonna put everybody into breakout rooms. Remember when you get the thing on your screen to join the room, the blue button, please click the button and that'll put you into your breakout room. So all rooms are open for them. Right. So um, did it wind up being four people per room, Michael, or do we you have, have to adjust? Uh, we're getting there. We have four. Yeah, yeah. Four um, people left to, yeah. uh, to join if they want to. Yeah. Okay. There's a few. We have one room, uh, room two, where two people have decided not to, which leaves the room kind of vacant. So I'm going to move the person from two to three. Nice. Thank you. That'll take care of that one. And we'll do this one. Whoops, not high. There we go. We got that one squared away. I think we're in good shape. Okay, so you have three People there's who, there's who not two rooms with room. yeah right yeah. and we have two rooms that only have three people in them. And that's fine. So I I that's have my, I have my clicker working here and uh, uh, we can do some broadcast messages in a few seconds. We'll tell them four minutes, three minutes, two minutes. You get the idea. Terrific.
So, Shira, is the target end time 6.45 or 6.30? 6.45. Okay. I, I thought you told me earlier 6.30. Okay. Good. 6.45. Awesome. Yeah, we're, we're doing good on time right now. This should work out pretty well. Hi, can, can somebody hear me? Yes. Yeah, hi, this is Edith. I'm, I'm going to have to leave um, because my battery is not charging correctly and I need to like unplug and all this kind of stuff. Um, okay. it's, it's something going on my phone. Will, will this recording be available later? Yes. Okay, yes. all right. If, yeah, I, yeah. This is one seven on Yep, if you go to um, on the boomerworks.org website and if you go to path to meetups and then just click on past meetups, this gotcha. this will this will come up um, right after the meeting. Edith, okay, I just great. put I just put the uh, link in the um, chat box. Okay, perfect. All right. I, I gotta go because this is now you're gonna let me stay. I wanna get that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Bye. So we have, uh, I've already sent a three minute notice and soon I'll send a two minute notice and then we'll. These breakout sessions always go by really fast when you're in them. Yeah, right. Yeah, people don't, yeah. <laughs> That's why I've come to putting these little reminders in every once in a while. To, sure. It kind of pushes people along. Mm hmm So how many, um, how many people have uh, signed in? Uh, I, think we we, have, I think we have 33. Nice. Yeah. I have Last time on our breakout, we had a few that came in late, but I just checked. It looks like we've got everybody in here. Yeah, we're in very nice. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we had three people who chose not to join rooms. So that's fine. Yeah. You know, sometimes the technology can be challenging. I know um, last week I was, I was um, the, instead of hitting to accept me into the room, the um, presenter mistakenly danced to do their pitch. Um, you know, this is something that you can't practice enough as a business owner is to being able to really succinctly communicate who you are and what you do. So uh, never pass up an opportunity to, um, to do your pitch. And um, I hope that that also helps you get to know um, what a couple of what other some other folks who are on this session are doing. So now I need to. Okay. All right. So we just talked about, you know, some really basic, no matter what type of business you have, relevant places to start establishing your digital footprint. Now we're going to just kind of, you know, do a little bit of a um, little bit more complicated, but still very doable type things. And the first thing that you really need to think about now that you've got this kind of preliminary digital um, footprint established is creating your digital home base. And that is your website. This is your digital front door of your business. Um, you know, now five years ago, I had a lot of people saying to me, oh, I, Facebook, I'm just gonna use Facebook as my, my digital home base, no problem. Well, since then, Facebook has changed the rules so dramatically that nobody can see that digital front door unless you pay for them to see it. So. You know, these other tools are great, but they will come and they will go. The rules will change. They may monetize things. If you establish your website, you have control and ownership of that website. And don't burden yourself with thinking that you need to have a website that competes with the best website of anybody in your industry. Just start somewhere. One of the things that I love about websites, you know, I started my career doing print publications. I can't even tell you how many times I got a 10,000 copies of a brochure with a typo in it and it just like just pained me to see those sitting there websites aren't that way you can go in five times today five times this month never this month um, you can change them at will uh, which is you know really a wonderful gift so just start with somewhere and evolve your website as your understanding of your business evolves and as your understanding of your customer evolves um, 
some worthy things to consider for a website is WordPress. About 75% of small business websites are powered by WordPress. It is a free content management system that you can use either at WordPress.com or at any number of website hosts. Um, Squarespace um, is uh, designed as kind of an all-in-one tool for small businesses. Um, they, you, you just Go to the Squarespace site and it says, let's get started. And you just start in entering information, you make a few choices, and you have a website. Um, Squarespace is what is kind of called a closed platform. WordPress is open source. Anybody can use it. Anybody can develop additions for WordPress. Squarespace is kind of quite the opposite, where they have a suite of tools that are all just proprietary to Squarespace. But those tools may be exactly what you need, and you might really like kind of the all-in-one nature of Squarespace. And then we talked about e-commerce sites earlier, but Shopify is an extremely popular kind of all-purpose e-commerce website. That could also be a worthy place. If your business is really just focused on e-commerce, that might be the great place for you to establish your, your digital front door, your website. Um, now, all of these options, WordPress, Squarespace, Shopify, others that are out there, everybody will tell you it's easy, you can do it yourself. But you have to be honest with yourself about your skill set and really how much you want to put into uh, creating your website. Um, you may be really good with words and not really good with images. I'm guilty as charged on that. Um, you may really not like writing anything. Um, so think about the skills, the basic skills that are needed to create a website is some basic web development. Like I said, most of these tools will kind of walk you through and try not to have you know any specific coding, um, but it doesn't hurt. Um, you need to have content and you need to have some type of visual. So you think about what you're comfortable kind of working through on your own and think about hiring some professional support on the things that you, you know, that are more challenging to you or you just don't really want to do. So with all of these tools in place for your digital footprint, all of these free, um, these free uh, directories that you can list yourself in, places where you can claim your business listing, your online home base of your website, now what you need is your digital marketing strategy. Now you've got tools, we need the strategy to employ the tools. And so that's what we're gonna shift into talking about now. How do you come up with the right digital marketing strategy for your business? There is no single right marketing strategy. The strategy depends on your business and your customer and your skill set. So we're gonna tease into that in the next couple of slides. So in this section about talking about your digital marketing strategy, we're gonna talk about how to create the right strategy for your business. I'm gonna give you some tips to help you stay on track with your strategy. And I'm also gonna share with you some tools that you might wanna consider that will make it easy for you to stay on track with your strategy. So, you know, this slide is almost funny in a COVID world, but um, I kind of left it in here because this is the first thing that I usually have to talk to businesses about, about why do they need to be online? In fact, my business pitch for Kirch Digital Strategy often starts with, you never get a second chance to make a first impression, and you, about 50% of the people who know about your business are getting their first impression of you online. And that is the, what used to be a revelation to a lot of people because they always thought that face-to-face -face and, you know, what they did in the physical uh, world, the networking, was where they were really marketing their business. But people spend about four and a half hours online, um, and that was pre-COVID. So I would imagine that time is even more. And then this chart gives you a breakdown of the types of things that they're doing when they're online. So the bottom line is, you know, you can, you can control your print materials and who you mail them to. You can control how you look and present yourself in face-to-face um, -face networking, but probably 50% or more of the people who get to know you or your business are going to first meet, meet you online. So that is why having a digital marketing strategy 
is extremely important to any business operating in 2020. So why do I talk about strategy? I, I've learned that a lot of people find strategy um, to be a, um, a, a word that they kind of shy away from. But really, the strategy is all about helping you to get the most of everything you do with your online marketing. If you just are just react, you're just doing things, you now have activity and you don't have a plan. You're just guessing of what is going to work for your for your business. You don't know what's, what it's, how it's affecting people. You don't know what it's doing for your business, but you are probably very busy and you might be spending a lot of money. Um, I would say if you're going to use your time and your money, you deserve to know that what you're doing is, is having the effect that you want it to have. Um, you do not have resources to waste. That's another reason why you want a strategy. Um, I have several clients that share with me all the time, all the unsolicited support that they get by email and sometimes through their storefront. Everybody's got a great idea. It's just this much money a month. Well, how do you know what is the, the good, what is really a good idea for you and what's not and what is an effective use of resources, AKA money and time, and what is a waste of your resources, money and time. Your strategy will help you to tease out, to evaluate all of those opportunities and to make really great decisions about what to do or what to pass on. Um, and the other really awesome thing about having a strategy is it will let you know what works. Um, without a strategy, you know you did a lot of things, but you don't really know if they move the needle for your business. So to get to your strategy, I, I, have, I kind of have distilled it down to what I call the four big questions. These are the four things that you need to work yourself, work through for you and your business in order to create the right strategy for your business. And um, just as a little pre-warning, we're gonna do an exercise about this after I talk through this slide. So just be thinking about um, how all of these things relate to your business. The very first thing you need um, to develop your marketing strategy is to know what your business goal is. Now, your business goal may likely change over time. If you're just getting started, your business goal may very well just to be to market the name of your business, to create some awareness out in the marketplace. You might be a little bit more established and you're looking to increase sales of one or more of your products and services. Or your goal might be to just build your network, um, to create relationships that will help you to build your business to get the customer base that you want. So there are a lot of goals that a business might have. Think about the goal, the, the number one thing you need to accomplish for your business now. It should be visionary. It should help you advance the business that you're trying to build. The next thing you really need to focus on is your audience, who it is that you're trying to serve. And the question, the big question I put is, what does my best customer care about? And this is something that I think is really hard for a lot of business owners. I made kind of a mention before, if somebody from California contacted me and wanted my digital strategy services, I would not turn them away. However, that's not really a productive thing for me to focus on, being as I've been in business for 10 years and I've never had a business, uh, a customer in California. A California business is not my best customer. My best customer is somebody who's more locally located to me. That just happens to be true for my business. So you really need to think about who is it that you would, you know, how would you envision? Some people go as far as to create personas for that best customer, and that may help you to really um, get a good handle on who that best customer is. But you want to really think about everything about that best customer. Who are they? Um, where do they live? What do they enjoy doing? What do they buy? What don't they like? What, what is not appealing to them? You really want to understand what that customer cares about, because that will help you to market in a way that resonates with that customer. If you're thinking right now, well, my customer is anyone. I, you know, I've worked with real estate agents who have said to me, my customer is anybody who wants to buy a house. That is not the right answer. You need to think about it more deeply than that. You really, it's not anybody around the globe that wants to buy a home. Um, 
think about it, there are more criteria to it than that. You know, is it the young, is it the young family who's looking for room to grow? Is it the retirees that are looking for room, to, you know, looking to downsize? Is it a veteran who needs some accommodation in their home? So you really need, the more you can define who your best customer is, the more success you will find with your marketing because you're able to be targeted and specific instead of global and general because the specificity is what differentiates you from everybody else who is a realtor, a plumber. Um, we're all different. We need to help people to understand what those differences are in a way that resonates with what they care about. The other thing, and this is a real honesty point that you have to have with yourself, is what are your resources? Um, if you have one hour a day to put into your market, in, into your marketing, awesome. Plan for one hour a day. If you've got one hour a month, that works too. But don't plan for one hour a day if you only have one hour a month because you will be 29 hours behind every month. Um, and that doesn't feel good. So be honest with yourself. What, how much time do you have to put into your marketing? How much money do you have to put in your marketing? Do you have a $25 monthly budget? Do you have a $2,500 monthly budget? Those are two very different marketing plans. But you can make those $25 work for you in a awesome, effective way if that is what you plan for, okay? And then likewise, what people do you have to put into your marketing? I, have, I can't even tell you how many folks who come to me and say, oh, my marketing plan isn't working. And they have, you know, budget, they have three people's worth of work and they have a half-time position working on the marketing. That also is not going to set you up for success. So be really honest with yourself about what resources you have. Plan for what you've got now. And then the last thing that's really important is to bake in how are you going to measure progress. Often that comes right off of understanding what your goal is, because if you understand what your goal is, you're going to understand that you're, how you're moving toward that goal. But you really want to think about everything you do, how are you going to figure out if that particular thing was successful for your business? So, okay. So here are the four big questions again. Um, Michael's going to put you into breakout rooms. This time we're going to give you 15 minutes. What I'd like you to do as a group is to pick one of these four um, that you want to just brainstorm as a group. And I think it would be really helpful if everybody talked about their thoughts in relation to their business. And maybe it'll be an opportunity to get some more ideas from the other people in the room based on what they've been thinking about. Um, you know, and maybe there'll be some brainstorming in general about what factors come into each of these four big questions to really get to the right answer for each of your businesses. So I'm going to let Michael put you guys into breakout rooms. You're going to have 15 minutes. One thing I want to say is I would really love if one or more of the groups would like to share um, when we get back uh, with the group of maybe a key takeaway or, um, you know, which question you discussed and what you all thought was most important there. So be thinking about that if you'd like to, um, to, to share with the whole wide group when you get back. So 15 minutes, pick a big question and dive into it a bit in terms of your business. Welcome back, everyone. Um, and I hope uh, we were all, um, those of us who weren't in the room, we're hoping that we gave you enough time to, um, to have some kind of meaningful um, discussion of at least one of the, uh, the big questions. So um, I had um, offered at the, before we left, does, any, um, does anybody want to um, talk about what their group talked about? Uh, maybe some, what the question was and what some of the good points that might've been raised during the discussion? Oh, don't be shy. We're all friendly here. I'll share quickly. Okay, thanks, Robin. Robin. Yeah, so we decided it was what I call the target market. Jill, your question was awesome. What does my best customer care about? So we call it target market. We were kind of getting off track 
And I'm like, okay, back, what is your best customer care about? What problem are you solving for them? What do they look like? And everybody went through their, their market. I thought everybody did a really awesome job. But it was good guidance uh, with, the, with the framework that you set out. And then we, that was enough time. It was awesome. Good. Anybody else in my group can chime in. <laughs> <laughs> any, other, any other group want to share? Okay, well, um, there's also time for Q&A um, at the end. So um, maybe we can process through anything that might have come up during that. Um, but, you know, I, I call them the four big questions because they aren't easy questions. Um, and so they are all worthy of your, um, your thought and um, contemplation. Um, and probably you can't answer them all in a day. I don't know what that time frame will be for you, but give yourself time um, to really dig into each one of those questions so that you can get to the best answers for your business. Okay, so, you know, so that is kind of the big, the big part of your strategy is kind of setting your goals and understanding who your audience is, understanding what resources you have to put to your plan and how are you gonna measure the success of your plan. So now we need to kind of talk about what are the elements of that actual plan gonna be. And I always encourage everyone to start with where they are already. So part of that answer might be that you followed the um, advice of the beginning of this presentation. You may have a LinkedIn company page. 69% um, of you already had a LinkedIn profile. You may have some presence on Facebook, some other places. Um, that's a great place to start because a great place to start is always where you already have a little bit of traction. Um, if you don't know where you are, I know some percentage of folks said that they, didn't, they didn't, weren't anywhere online. You might be surprised. Google yourself, Google your business name, and you know there are a lot of different um, bots that run around the internet and they gather information. Um, I one time had a real estate agent approach me and he said, I don't like to do anything online, I have no online presence. I Googled him and literally found 16 places where he was already online that he didn't know about. So um, if you're not sure, Go ahead and Google yourself. Uh, you might, you might uh, find some interesting results. The next place that you want, focus that you want to have are the places where your, that your customer values, okay? And um, how do you know the places your customer values? Well, you can start on a nice global scale by looking at some national data. There are a lot of social media companies that do research on a regular basis. Um, my favorite place to get data is from the nonprofit Pew. Um, Pew has been researching who's online, what they're doing, what they like, what they dislike for years. They have um, a tremendous bank of data. Um, they offer you everything from the raw data to summary reports to some awesome visualization charts. Um, Pew can be a really great way to figure out you know, when you know that your target customer is men in their 30s and 40s, Pew will break out for you what social media those folks use, what kinds of things are they inclined to do online. Um, you can get some tremendous insight from that national data. Um, the other way to get insight is to ask um, people who are in your target audience. And don't mix, make, make, don't, um, mix up what you like and where you want to be with where your target audience wants to be. I talk to business owners all the time that think that it's because it's something they like that their target audience is going to like. Well, you know, I'm a 50 something, you know, woman. And if my target audience is young mothers, what I like may not be very relevant um, to understanding where the right places my business needs to be. So, um, you can ask on social media, you can ask people who you know that fit your demographic, you can ask customers, you can ask, you know, one, one of the great marketing tools, ask people who are your prospects. Um, you know, say, oh, I'm just doing a little bit of marketing research. Talk about a nice indirect sell. Um, and you're demonstrating to them how much you care about understanding what their wants and needs are. You're creating awareness of your business and you're, get, you're, you're um, gathering business intel. So, boom three things in one. Um, you also want to look at what, um, what content your customer wants. Uh, that's kind of all, I kind of morphed from understanding where they, where they want to be to understanding what content they want. So 
ask people, you know, what is it that you would like to get from a business like mine? What do you want to know about? What are the common questions that you have? Uh, for people that are already in business, I always say keep a pad next to the telephone. So every conversation you have, you can jot down. What are the things that people are looking for? What are they asking you that you could provide online, on a website, on a LinkedIn company page, um, in your profiles elsewhere that can give them the information that they need so that they understand that you're the right provider for what they're looking for. Um, and then the last factor is to really, as you're thinking about what elements you're gonna bring into your plan, what are, where is your comfort zone and, and skill set? So you may not be your target customer, but if you don't like to, to create video, you don't want to create a marketing plan that demands you to create video all the time. Maybe you want to use video as a secondary thing. Video um, gets a lot of positive publicity. People are very visual. People like to see video. But, you know, if that's just not your jam, you don't really want a plan, a marketing plan, that has you doing video all the time. You're going to set yourself up for frustration. But maybe plan to do one or two things with video. Put your toe in the water. Get a little bit used to it. See how that plays out for you. See if you want to do video more in the future. Um, I regularly wind up um, talking to people who have very, very writing intensive marketing plans, and they're just so frustrated because they don't like to write. Um, and if you don't like to write, then maybe your marketing needs to be more positioning yourself as a subject matter curator who taps into all of the great thinking and writing that's happening in your area of expertise that you are then curating and sharing with your target customer. So there's a lot of ways to, you know, have ample material for your marketing plan, um, but just take time to think about what are the things you like to do? And maybe, maybe you have, you know, love to have conversations with people and a podcast would be a great tool for your marketing plan where you can just sit and have a 30 minute conversation with people and post that recording. So think about what are the things you really like to do? What are the skills that you have that you can bring to your marketing? And so then you need to think about what are the platforms. And some of these we've already talked about kind of in our, in our startup phase, but a website is, you know, very worthy of consideration for your business for the reasons I talked about earlier. Google Business is pretty much a must-have for every any business who wants to assert themselves for a local service provider. And local can be a five-state region. Local doesn't have to be one town. But Google Business is how you will get the visibility you need for that business. Um, Facebook, uh, we were uh, before the presentation joking about the graphic of this presentation and, and Facebook symbol was the big toe and, you know, do people really want to, you know, people may not agree that Facebook is the big toe. Well, Facebook is the big toe, folks, because um, you can look at the Pew data, you can look at any other data. Facebook has twice and more the audience than any other social platform that's out there. Um, it's absolutely remarkable, the audience that Facebook has amassed. Um, LinkedIn is the network for professional networking. We're all kind of coming at this from, you know, uh, marketing, some area of expertise. So LinkedIn probably makes sense for everybody who's, um, who's participating here today. I already discussed Yelp. Um, you also want to think about, um, there are directories that we talked about earlier that are free or that come to you by virtue of a membership. There are other directories that you might need to pay into. Um, Angie's List comes to mind. Um, there's uh, Open Table for restaurants. There are a lot of um, platforms out there that have already amassed. If they are, have amassed the audience you want to reach, it's very worthy of consideration of building them into your marketing plan. And again, you, you need to consider what your budget is. You don't want to be paying more than your budget can allow. Um, when I first started my business, I used the freelance site uh, Thumbtack, which it was one of the icons on that slide earlier. And um, I used that to prospect for business. Well, there's a cost to every, um, every Thumbtack um, opportunity you respond to has a certain cost to it. And after about six months of doing Thumbtack, I, um, I did a cost benefit analysis. What was it costing me to get those leads and what was the business generated by those leads? 
Um, and for the first year or two of my business, Thumbtack was a worthy place for me to be spending some of my marketing money. Um, after that point, it became a diminishing returns. I was getting a lot of customers through other resources, and I no longer actively participate in Thumbtack. So those are the kinds of conversations you need to have with yourself, but that your plan will allow you to evaluate because it's got a structure to it. You know what are the things you're doing, why you're doing them, how much resource you're putting into them, and you'll have your understanding of your measures of success so you can make, you can make those evaluations of what you should continue and what you should leave. Um, I also already mentioned Nextdoor, so I won't uh, talk further about that. Okay, and so through your marketing plan, one you know kind of overarching, no matter what your goal was, whether it was to build a community, to increase sales, to create awareness, you are the heart of your company. Um, whether you have 10 people in your company or you are a solopreneur, um, your expertise is what created this company. So you need to position yourself as an expert in whatever area of endeavor. And just like I encourage you to really tease into who your best customer is, I really encourage you to think very deeply about what is it in your area of expertise that you are best at. Um, I've had a 30 year career in public relations and marketing. I pretty much have done just about anything you can think of. But when I sat down and I thought, what is the skill that I really have that I enjoy doing, that I think that I can you know, benefit, um, make a benefit to the, the market I wanna serve, and that became for me online marketing. So I don't do print brochures, I don't do any number of things that come under the umbrella of marketing. I do online digital relationship marketing. And my ability to articulate that about my business is what helps people understand if I can really help them with what they need. So um, think about your area of expertise and reflect that through your marketing for your business. So your business may sell widget X, but your expertise that, let, that allows you to market widget X is a value add for your customers. So you share your um, expertise in social media posts, both in content you create and in content I talked earlier. Some of you may want to spend more time curating content from others because you don't really want to create a lot of your own content. That's totally fine. I have a client who is a plumber. You might have figured that out because I keep going to plumbing. Um, he's not a writer. He doesn't really like to write, but there's lots of good advice out there about how to, you know, how a, how a homeowner can try to unplug a drain, how they can diagnose why the toilet is making that funny noise. He doesn't have to write that content himself, but he curates it and he shares it, which creates value so that when people can't troubleshoot something themselves, he becomes the expert that they want to call. Um, LinkedIn has moved from, it used to have to be invited to be a LinkedIn expert, it was an exclusive club. Well now anybody can write an, a LinkedIn article about their area of expertise. Uh, when you go to your LinkedIn profile next time, just notice that it asks you, you know, what do you want to, what do you want to do? And one of the prompts is to write an article. You can, you can write a post, you can write an article. Well, articles are intended to be longer form. It's an opportunity for you to build a collection of information that reflects your expertise. So consider LinkedIn articles. Um, and then there are a number of forum sites. Um, some professional organizations have message boards to them. Um, there are also LinkedIn groups that often are topical in nature. And then there are two big kind of social, quasi-social media channels called Quora and Reddit. And what all of these things have in common is people ask questions and other experts answer. Um, and so participating in you know, groups or, um, or discussion boards related to your area of expertise is an excellent way to become known in the marketplace. And what you're doing, and it, what's wonderful about them is you don't have think about what people want. They ask questions. They tell you what they want. And all you have to do is respond to their, um, to what they've put out there that they want. So that's something else to think about. Okay. 
So what are the major components of the right digital strategy for your business? Component number one is it is written. Even before I, I crossed the 50 threshold, I didn't remember things as well as I thought I did. Okay, so write your strategy down. Having a strategy in your head is not having a strategy. You really need to take time to write it down. You will be amazed that even a month later, you'll go back and you'll look and you'll like, oh, that was a really great idea. I forgot that I had that idea. So take the time to write down your strategy. Write down your goal. Write down what you know about your best customer. Write down what you know about your key differentiator in the marketplace. Write down which tools, which platforms um, you want to leverage in your plan, how you plan to leverage them, and how you are going to measure your success. So um, it's written, it's specific, and it's measurable. And I think all of us have some way, at some point in time encountered, this is kind of, this might sound familiar to you. Um, this is the classic smart, uh, a smart strategy. Um, you can call them smart goals, smart objectives, whatever you wanna call, but the acronym that, that lives through all of that is smart. You wanna be specific, measurable. You want your plan to be attainable and actionable, okay? Goals are your place to be visionary, but the specific things you're gonna to do to move yourself toward the goal, they should be highly attainable and actionable so that you can make progress and move toward that goal. In a similar vein, they need to be realistic. You can't from, you know, from the moment you thought about your business, expect to have an international consumer base for your business. Sometimes you get lucky, that's great, but for most of us, we kind of have to start small and grow big. So be realistic with yourself. What's, it, what's gonna be achievable in the next month, the next quarter, the next year? Um, and like, and as I just alluded to, always have a time frame on things, okay? You want to achieve X in what time frame? And then that helps you to decide the level of activity. If this is something that you have a year to achieve, you may not have to have so much activity around it as something that you want to achieve by the end of this month. Um, so that's smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, time bound. Um, when it comes to measurement, I would suggest to you think of kind of measurement in two levels. Well, three levels. One is the immediate measurement. I posted something to Facebook how many people engaged with that post. That's a, that's a really nice quick snapshot to see that your marketing effort is reaching the people you want to reach. So that's kind of the quickie. Then I recommend that you take your measures and formally document everything that you want to measure at the end of every month or the middle of every month or whatever monthly interval works for you. It really helps, um, although social media is 24 seven, um, you really need a period of time to understand trends and what's having an effect. And a monthly time, I would suggest, is kind of the minimal, kind of the minimal valuable data that you're going to get. The the day to day is all just kind of transient. But at the end of a month, you can start to see, are you building the momentum that you want to build? So I I recommend everybody record their measures every month and then follow that up with a quarterly deeper assessment. Now you have three months of data, you can look at it, am I getting traction on LinkedIn? Are the people who I want to be my best customer engaging with me on Facebook or can I do less Facebook and more LinkedIn or less Twitter and more Facebook? Um, so that three month time frame, you can really start to get some good insights from your measures. Okay, so how do you stay on track with this plan? You've taken the time to write it, got lots of stuff in it. How do you stay on track? My first recommendation is you convert your plan to a calendar. This can be a good old desktop blotter calendar. It can be a Google calendar. It can be on your phone calendar. But break down everything you want to do in your plan to specific things. If you want to do a Facebook post weekly, put down on every week of every month. Uh, whatever day you want to do that post. 
um, you, you want to just break it down so that you don't constantly have to think about the big picture, that you can just implement the specific tactics within your marketing plan, and that at the end of the month, you will have accumulated the things that you wanted to get done, even without thinking about the bigger picture. Um, I also recommend you maintain an asset inventory. Um, so many things that you will create in your marketing, you can use again and again and again. We all know people have the attention span of gnats these days. So something you posted at the beginning of August, you can use again probably by the end of August and people won't even remember that you posted it, okay? So give yourself a break. Don't always have to create new content. Take the time to have an inventory. I keep my inventory in an Excel spreadsheet. You also could just have a folder, whether it's on your computer or actually on your desk where you just toss things in to remind yourself of the assets you have. But keep an inventory. Um, assign time uh, in your day, in your work day, to do your marketing. It's not gonna do itself. So if you committed to one hour a month or one hour a week, schedule that hour to do your marketing work. Um, we already talked about documenting your progress. Um, and then the other thing is, I think a lot of people are scared of strategy because they feel that they're locking themselves in. Don't be afraid to flex based on reality. And boy, oh boy, did we all have to flex in the last couple of months. So I want to just do a really quick poll. We're kind of running low on time, so we'll just give it a minute. Um, and I, here are some components of being successful with a marketing plan. I, I want to hear from you. What do you think is going to be your biggest challenge? Um, it's always important to acknowledge that it's not going to be easy. So which, which of these things do you think is going to be your biggest challenge in um, having a marketing plan? Okay, got a few people who voted. Okay, so uh, creating a calendar and creating those assets, they came in uh, one and two. Um, not surprising. Um, those are, you know, but, you know, once you get into a groove, um, especially with the calendar, once you decide how you're going to do that and just, you know, commit yourself to it, I think you'll find it will be a tremendous, um, a, a tremendous uh, value add for your time. Um, and creating the assets, again, I think that my best advice to you there is to just make sure you keep track of your assets and don't be afraid to repurpose. Um, and one of the things I was just reading today, um, you know, a great piece of advice is, you know, when, when a blog post is six or more months old, just do a new take on it. And Lord knows, we have new takes on lots of things since COVID has uh, interrupted our lives. So um, you can also uh, do that to kind of take off the burden of creating new content all the time. Okay, I promised you some tools and we're running out, but, um, so managing the, um, the elements of your marketing plan, Hootsuite and Buffer are both free tools that allow you to schedule things. I have a tendency to schedule all of my social posts for an entire month, um, and I do that on Hootsuite, and then I don't have to think about it for the rest of the month. Um, creating images, these are all um, free. Uh, Canva is a free graphics tool. GIMP is like a Photoshop equivalent that's open source and free. Unsplash is a great place to get royalty-free photos that you can use in your marketing. Uh, if you don't have the spelling and grammar checker turned on in your Word, um, your Microsoft Word, turn it on. Um, it's a great, um, you don't need an assistant to do your spell checking and your grammar checking. Word will do that for you. And there's also a really nice online tool called Grammarly that can help you, um, you know, make sure your writing is, is uh, punched up. Um, if you need content ideas, a lot of people said that that's a challenge. There's a great site called Answer the Public um, that will give you ideas based on what you know that you're about your target customer. Uh, HubSpot has a blog topic generator that's really fun. Um, so maybe something like that will help you get off, uh, help you to understand, um, get some ideas for what you want to do with your content. And then uh, if you're going to dive into that video world, um, 
there are, you know, obviously you can use your, uh, your cell phone and just take a video, but if you don't like to see yourself on video and I'm guilty as charged, uh, there's a great whiteboarding video tool called Doodly um, that, that creates those whiteboard type videos. And then Animoto is another tool that um, has lots of templates built in and you just replace your co their content with your content and boom, you have a video. So I am wrapping up and these are the two key takeaways that I hope you got from um, all this information I threw at you today. Um, you need to market your business online. That will help to establish your brand, your expertise, and connect you with customers who are spending a whole lot of their time online. And the right plan isn't about the person next to you or the other person you chatted with over coffee. The right plan for you depends on your business and your goals. And it takes into my account the resources that you have and it evolves over time as your business evolves. So I hope that I gave you information that will help you to get, make the most of these two key, two key cape takeaways. Um, and I know it's at the end of the time, but I am happy to answer questions. Okay, so if you'd like to unmute yourself, feel free to ask uh, Jill a couple questions. We're getting lots of uh, wonderful comments, Jill. People are oh. very thankful. <laughs> okay, I'm not seeing the comments. I'm trying to see the faces. Yeah, um, yeah. And this is probably a lot of, I don't know what I don't know to ask yet. You know, um, I'm sure people will have to take time to digest. And again, this video will be on our, our website if you'd like to revisit it and, and think through. And uh, Jill, would you put your contact information in the chat box for everyone in case they want to follow up with you? Yes, absolutely. It was, um, I'm just going to scroll to the beginning to, um, it was in the beginning, there's my email address and now I will put it also in the chat box. Um, <clears throat> and, um, you know, anybody, I, I am the type of person I listen to presentations and I am always impressed by people who uh, can ask questions right away. Um, that's not me. Uh, so if you have questions after the fact, please feel free um, to, uh, to contact me. Um, I, I'm always happy to answer questions. I benefited from Shira and other um, wonderful people in my network. Um, somebody on the call, Robin Sumi, was also a tremendous resource to me when I started my business. Um, you know, we all benefit from our community. Um, and so I am happy to be part of your community as you tease through these really important, um, you know, your digital footprint is very important for your business. So um, feel free to reach out and I'm happy to answer questions as I can because, you know, you give, you get, and uh, we all win. That's wonderful. Jill, could, would you mind um, forwarding us to the end of the presentation? Oh, sorry. I think, oh, yep. Sorry. I, That's okay. <laughs> There you go, Shira. Take Great, it away. Thanks so much. And again, thank you, Jill, so much. Yay, round of applause for Jill. <laughs> Appreciate you so much. And I uh, just want to let you guys know what's, go what's happening next with BoomerWorks. As you can see, for those of you who have been following us, we've been trying to provide edu rich educational content like what Jill provided um, a couple times a month. You'll see that there are other topics that we have coming up. Uh, very specifically, um, we have um, on, on September 17th, we have an Operations 101 um, presentation that hopefully will be helpful to, to get people to kind of get your, get your technology and your finances kind of in the right order. But prior to that, on August 27th, we're going to have another one of our uh, sort of intro uh, to self-employment um, uh, meetups called, uh, we call it a discovery session. Now, of course, folks on this call may not need that. We get that because a lot of you have been tracking with us. However, you could share that with your colleagues, your friends, those who've just been contemplating the idea of, of starting going solo, don't even know where to start, uh, we are going to be having uh, another presentation again on August 27th. Myself and Michael Butera will be leading that and uh, just to help people kind of get off on the right foot. And then eventually we would like to have what we're going to call growth groups, which are going to be accountability and encouragement groups, peer sharing, uh, led by facilitators and coaches so that you all can get together on a regular basis and share ideas and help each other and encourage each other on the journey. So, Look forward to that coming up soon. 
So uh, thanks again. Um, Jill, if you could just help me with the next slide. Um, if you've got questions, info at BurmaWorks.org. Uh, we, we are a volunteer organization. We subsist off donations. So we would welcome your, your contributions. If you'd like to volunteer, please let us know. And if you haven't already done so, please uh, join our community. Go to BurmaWorks.org, hit the Join button, hit Join Our Community, just so, just so you can get um, our regular uh, updates beyond whatever you get on Meetup. We, we also have our own Meetup. Thanks again, everyone, for your time tonight, and uh, we wish you well and have a, have a blessed evening. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone.